Hello and welcome to your space with your host Hannah Ari Nitwe. We are here once again to take on the fight against corruption. Now with me in studio is a fantastic team and I'm super, super, super excited to be talking about something special today. That is S-P-O-R-T-S, sports. But before I get into the discussion further, I'm going to allow my team to introduce themselves and I'll start with the only gentleman on the panel. Hello and welcome to the show. How has your week been? I had a good week. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here in your space. My name is Godson Ochira, and I'm uh, a student at Makere University pursuing journalism and communication, but also I'm a sports reporter. I write about sports. I'm a sports analyst, so I'm here, and I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about something I love, and that is sports and corruption. Thank you so much for honoring my invite. Hello to the other guest. Uh, hello, I'm Kalanzi Shamira. I'm a student of journalism at Makere University final year. I'm also a volleyball player in the National Volleyball League. I'm also a sports journalist, yet to be a reporter. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us on to the show, Shamira. Welcome, Doctor, to the show. Thank you very much, Hannah, and you're welcome, our guests. Thank I am you. Patricia Achan Ukiria. I am the Deputy Inspector General of Government, and I'm very happy and delighted to be part of this conversation this evening. Yes, today we're going to be looking at athletes as anti-corruption advocates. I don't know about you, but it's rare, uh, it's a rare occasion for me to ever listen to the word athletes, sports, and corruption in the same sentence. But once again, this is your space where we get into those discussions that aren't given the platform that they actually deserve. I'll start with Shamira. Shamira, how many times in the sports arena that you are in do you hear the word corruption? Is it something that you come across each and every day? Actually, uh, in volleyball, I said I play in the National Volleyball League, so uh, corruption is very common. It's something you hear very often. Everyone tends to express their feelings in a different way <coughs> towards that. Yeah, usually sports tends to be about skill and what you can do. But if the case of corruption comes in, then we go away from the skill. Now we look at people. Who do you know? Mm. Yeah, who knows you? Who can push you and all that? So there's a lot of that in sports. Yes. yes. How about you, uh, Godson? Have yeah. you come across uh, corruption a lot it's in the sports it's arena? It's a very common word. If mm. you watch football, you follow football anywhere in the world, you know that it's hard for any match day to go by without you uh, seeing something that does not depict mm. corruption. So it's a common word. Mm. It's a common word. People mm. prefer to, to say robbery. Uh, my team robbery. was robbed. Oh, robbed. Yes. So, <laughs> but all in all, they are trying to uh, bring mm. out the, the, mm. the true meaning of corruption in sports. True. So yes, it is. It is there. Now, Dr. Patricia, every time your office comes into the media, on social media, we're always seeing you um, Com combat corruption uh, when it comes to funding, bribery, maybe big political spaces. We've never really seen a lot of uh, combustion when it comes to sports. Does it ever happen in your office? Do you ever come across corruption in the sports arena? Well, corruption, like I said previously, corruption is like an amoeba. It changes forms and shapes and it can feature in any, any area or any aspect or any area of life. In sports, corruption does occur. Mm -hmm. Our office has handled some cases where some, some athletes have come to complain, some players and federations have come to complain over so many things that happen in respect to corruption in the mm -hmm. sports arena. And for me, I think the, the, the athletes or the sports people can play a very significant role, especially in dealing with that corruption which occurs in their cycles. If they can come open to name and shame, if they can report those cases to the institutions that be, then we can swing into action and investigate them and have them prosecuted. But corruption actually does happen and it affects the performance of the different teams. Mm. If, for instance, if you pick the example Shamila has just shared, if somebody is taken for a competition on the basis of who whose child he is or whether he has paid a tip or bribe or something, then we are not taking skill. We are moving away from skill and taking mediocres who cannot win mm. the tournaments. 
So I think it needs to be tackled, and I'm very happy we are having this conversation today Definitely. because this gives us an opportunity to come up with strategies to t deal better with the problem of corruption within the sports arena. Thank yeah. you. I think also one of the things I'm very uh, interested in having a conversation on is basically how athletes can serve as influential advocates in the fight against corruption, even when they are in their space focusing on mainly the skills we also need them to look at you know standing against corruption in their area so Godson, how do you think that uh, so many sports enthusiasts should stand as advocates in the fight against corruption now corruption corruption entails a lot we have bribery we have match fixing we have doping now in, what in is the, doping in the game so of sports. Not sports, uh, what is doping doping is uh, using performance enhancement substances okay. to boost your performance in the pitch mm. or to get results that you, you a player trains but does not trust that they have trained enough mm. they take something to boost their performance it could be something some of, of some sort of like an energizer mm. to make you cover a lot of kilometers in the pitch so that is not allowed in sports so if a, a sports personality goes out in the pitch and the with the influence of uh, performance enhancement substances and performs and beats the op opposing team, that is corruption. Mm. Because you're not using the, your natural talent, you're not using your natural energy mm. to get the results mm. you've got. Mm. So that is corruption as well. So that is doping. Okay. Match fixing is you want to predetermine the results of a match. How? How is that? that you, you go into a match, you already know what is going to happen. Hey. Probably because you collaborated with a, a third or fourth party to ensure that you predetermine the results of, mm. ma uh, of a match. I can talk about betting. You collaborate with a match official of that day, mm -hmm. or because there are very many stakeholders and parties that ensure that a football game happens, or a volleyball game, or an athletics game happens. So you bribe the referee, or you give him some tips, like uh, Madame said, mm. so that he can rule in your favor, mm. so that uh, a player can cause the penalty in the box in the, in, in the stoppage time. And, and, you, and, 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 and then the other team scores mm. so that it can rhyme and um, is consistent with what you talked about prior to the game. So that is match fixing. You're fixing the game before it's even played. You want to know how come uh, mm. the outcome of the game. Also, mm. we're talking about bribery. You can bribe ref uh, officials, match officials. Yours uh, for volleyball, it's the umpire. Yeah, it's very, very common. Exactly. Here. The ref was bribe, mm. what? So, so common. When the game is on, you don't even understand what is going on. Mm. Like the referees begin to create new fouls in the pitch, something that is not even <laughs> existing. They create new fouls. So all these uh, acts of corruption that is hampering our beautiful game mm. of uh, football, volleyball, and sports in general. Yes. yes, sports personalities should be the forerunners of campaigning against corruption. How mm. can they do this? First and foremost, there are campaigns always that are when cited, when, they, when, when, when corruption is cited in, in a game or in football. They, for example, I want to give an example of FUFA, the Federation of football, Uganda Football Associations. Uh, early last year, there were rampant cases of corruption yeah. in, in form of match fixing. <coughs> so they launched a campaign that uh, whoever, it, that it should be a collective responsibility that you, even you who is just a fan, who is not actively participating in football, mm. you can participate and get involved in fighting, match fixing. Mm. How? They came up with three errors. Mm. Recognize. Recognize. How do you recognize? A fan, you can recognize that, no, I have questions about this. This cannot happen. But is in this kind mm. of like a loophole, one way or the other, people may have their own intentions yes, and own just intentions. decide to say, there is... I am recognizing something here. Well, there is nothing. There, there, you're going to be asked to submit yes. evidence as well. That's so you, you recognize, mm. after recognizing, report and as well reject. Mm. Because if you recognize and you don't report, you've, that is no work done. Mm. You've not done any work. If you recognize but does not reject because it can, can come up to you and give you some money and say, we want this to happen. Can you uh, give us this in exchange for for a good result. Mm -hmm. So if you recognize it, you don't report, you've done no work because the officials won't know. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the committee in charge of investigating and later punishing mm -hmm. these uh, hooligans who are participating and hampering the beautiful game of sports or football mm -hmm. 
have, have not been cognized or have not been you know have not been brought to book so you're, you're doing nothing so mm. recognize reject and mm. report mm. i like how you talked about collective um, collective what Respons collective responsibility dr patricia mm. this is something that we always talk about into the show maybe you could add your voice on that why is it that collective responsibility is something we have to preach each and every day when it comes to the fight against corruption you see collective responsibility encourages a holistic approach to managing some of these problems or challenges or situations mm. if players can come together and reject a negative practice or negative influence then it can have impact if so many voices are added together to support yes. this particular thing then they can provide the evidence is talking about they can bring a good case and it can be wiped out and uh, the game will be improved and it's a reason why even with the anti-corruption agencies encourage network partnership and collect and collaborative alliances or strategic alliances to deal with certain issues because you can't leave it just to the individual the mm. individual can be victimized or thrown out of the team but if people come together and give support to this individual then they will have a collective voice and they will be able to wipe away the problem mm. yes but corruption manifests itself in many ways but uh, the sports people also play a very significant role like the advocates they can be advocates for uh, against corruption by reporting by even protecting the whistleblower mm. within by supporting with evidence and, uh, and 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 through their media campaigns they can actually uh, uh, speak against Definitely. corruption and promote integrity within the sport because if we have integrity within the sport then we'll be pushing for people who have skill and people who will advance the sport and people who can take it far and put the country or the teams on the map yes, yes. Mm. the conversation is getting juicy <coughs> by the moment let's take a break when we get back we'll be diving more into the conversation <laughs> Welcome back from that short break. You are still here on Your Space with your host, Hannah Arinito. We're still looking at the role that athletes play in the fight against corruption and into the sports world as well. Now, Shamira, have you had uh, any personal experiences with uh, corruption in your particular field? Well, there is a lot of corruption there. And... In this case, I'm going to talk about the national team and even the leagues that we play in. So for the leagues, as Godson had talked about earlier, there's a lot of match fixing. And it's very, very absurd. It's related to money, whereby a team will be given money and they say maybe you lose the first set. Mm. Then you win the next three. And they are in cahoots with the other team. So it makes the game very, very boring, very, very difficult. And it may even limit the chances of other players because if I play on that team and I'm not willing to actually take the bribe, then maybe I will lose my chances of playing mm. and I'll be sent away from the team. Mm. Then for the national team, I've seen this often and I think even in the football field, their coaches are chosen. I don't know how it's done very well in football, but the national team coach is also involved in selecting players to go for the national team. However, coaches tend to have favorites, obviously, mm. and there are players mm -hmm. who are not very good, but the coach has their own favorite. <laughs> they say, this is my player. For us in volleyball, we have teams playing in the league, and the coach may be one of the coaches having a team there in their league. So, of course, they will select their players, players on their team, to give them a chance to go, mm. and that's not a very good thing. Mm. So... I think we need to change our way players are selected for mm. teams. Okay, now here comes a situation where there is this certain <coughs> player who stands for integrity and is willing to stand against that unfair, you know, justice. Um, what kind of challenges do you think that they may face when they are standing against corruption? First of all, they may be sent away from the games they are playing. Mm. They may lose their chance, no matter how good they are. They may lose the opportunity to play. You lose talent. Because if you stand up against the big people, it tends to be very hard. Mm. Because you never know, these big people may also be involved in that sort of corruption because they are getting money from it. And people are chasing the bag these days. Mm. So it is very, very difficult. First of all, you will lose your chance. And you don't have people to support you. 
you don't you may not even have the evidence by mm. the way so it is you face a challenge of lack of evidence no support yes so we need to have more support in that area mm. and also earlier we talked about collective responsibility we as players despite the challenges we may have if I'm called for national team and I'm not good enough for it and I know someone else is better mm. why can't I just go and talk to the management and say give this spot to this person and it's there that's a that very collective, collective responsibility, responsibility to fight corruption mm. yeah. I don't deserve to be there mm. so I need to leave this spot for someone who deserves to be there that way you can gain the trust of this person if one day you wake up and say i am speaking out against this this person will be there for you mm. so mm -hmm. sometimes you have to let go of that opportunity and give it to someone because they deserve it more than you but that is very rare people are looking for i want to go out i want I to be known mm. but they are forgetting that if you're called and you don't deserve it and you still go, then you're actually mm. taking part in the corruption. Mm. Now, yes. Dr. Patricia, you've, you've had that explanation, you know. Sometimes it's hard for the young people in whatever field they're in to stand for integrity, stand for the right thing, because they are scared of uh, their opportunity being snatched away from them, their talent, their skill. What do you have to say about that? For me, I think if a young person is grounded in values, of integrity and honesty. If honesty, you know, honestly, you know that you don't have the skill to promote this sport or to perform, and your name has been taken, you you come out. It's like uh, having conflict of interest, mm. where you you declare to the entire team that, excuse me, for me here I have conflict of interest. Let mm. someone else take up this. I think it would be the best approach for someone to be transparent, to walk in the light, and say surely. I cannot perform here. If you take me, you're doing a disservice to the team and to the country. Yeah. So I would like to step down and someone else. And such a person, by the way, will have even better chances and better opportunities to exhibit their talents if they are grounded in it. So if it is not your area, please do not. Otherwise, you're going to bring losses to the team and to the country just because of that corruption. Yeah. Even if you're a son of a big person and they've smuggled you in to go for this <laughs> competition, please stand out, be, make a difference, speak the truth, and the truth will set you free. And you probably will have to excel elsewhere, but not in that particular area. Mm. So I think we need to walk the talk. Because sports people should be exemplary. When you come out exemplary and exhibit these this, uh, values, and principles you stand for, I think you will be promoting mm -hmm. a good example and then you will be fighting corruption because other people will see you. Immediately they may say you're a, a fool because you're giving out mm. an opportunity that has come your way. But what kind of opportunity is it? Is everything that comes our way good? Is it worth taking? So we need to make a difference by standing out from the crowd and being exemplary so that we show people exactly what direction to take. Mm. Because when you just accept, accept, all, accept, yeah. then you end up uh, messing up the team and promoting even more corruption in there. And I know the Minister of Sports, Education and Sports is doing something in cleaning up what is happening in some of these federations through the National Council mm. of Sports. Although there are complaints also that the National Council of Sports is a problem and, <laughs> and so on. But they have gone a long way in trying to bring sanity, especially in the federations, by promoting strict regulations and monitoring how they do their yeah. business and so on. Yeah, but mm. I think also this goes back. You guys uh, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to divert a little bit mm -hmm. uh, from uh, what my fellow panelists have said. Mm -hmm. Shamira, you talked about... Um, that you prefer, you think it's wiser for the manager or the coach not to be the one to choose yes. the players. Another person should choose the players. Actually, I would uh, prefer a council. Mm, because, a council. Uh, mm. the, the coach can be given an opportunity mm. to say, the, to list players and say, these are the players I think would be good for the team. Yes, select then for me. a different council, why. yeah, mm. a different council mm. would be chosen to now go and watch these players playing, scouting them slowly by slowly and say, okay, we have checked out the list of the coach and we think based off of our views and our 
watching these players mm. playing, mm. these are the better players. So and so should be removed from the list. Mm. That is what I think. Now, yes. I'm a national team coach. You've hired me. At the end of the day, if the team doesn't perform, you're going to fire me. No. You're going to assess the performance of the national team based on my abilities to coach them. I think at that point you should give the coach the opportunity to select the players he feels he can use to win games mm. so that if things don't go well on his side, we can say yes. You had the liberty you have to choose the, your own players to represent the nation, mm. to represent the club. Things did not work out. You take the entire blame. Because at the end of the day, you're going to assess the coach and evaluate how he has done, how he has, mm. um, you know, whether he has m met the expectations or the terms and conditions you set with him while you were giving him the contract. But you, there was another party that was involved in selecting for him the players, which you want him to use. So it's like imposing uh, players on me. So summoning a, te a team. Now, I, I, I think when you were talking about that, you were trying to stress the point <coughs> of favoritism. I actually may have forgotten to mm. mention the coach may not select specifically 11 players because when they call players for national team, it's they, they call a very huge squad. If mm. football takes 21, they will call like 30, 40. So they will an analyze those players mm. and take them. They take, they take to the training more than necessary. Mm. Then the coach later, after, after training and everything, mm. has the opportunity to select. My point is the coach should not be allowed to choose those 40 players that are taken for camp to mm. train for the national team. That's where the he corruption is. should wait for, is. for the 40 and choose the <laughs> finest no, from the 40. Mm. lay out a list mm. for the mm. 40 mm. that he wants. Then these people will go and look at them. Mm. And they can either choose to bring them or not, based off of their observation. Mm. So you are trying to stress the point of favoritism, to yes. avoid favoritism yes. of some that players. Is what I'm I think when at. we talk about the point of favoritism, in, in sports, I don't think it is going to be easy to fight favoritism. Yes. Because I even outside Uganda, in, in Europe, let me say England, these, these big footballing nations, mm. at least there are two or three players that you don't believe they should be in the <laughs> team. You <laughs> always doubt, really why is this person in this team? Mm. But it is the coach mm. who is going to use them, who thinks I can cultivate and ca capitalize on some potential this player mm. that can help the team in this way which the fans may not be able to see so uh, when it comes to that fighting for racism shamira it may be a losing battle for <laughs> but i mean for I, I think also one of the important things about the fight against corruption is to also have an open mind and a positive mm. mind mm. because sometimes we may believe that uh, i've had people say this numerous times uh, uh, even though you try, that one will never stop. Yeah. Then if we never try, how will you yeah, know you that it will, never, it will never stop? So I think also trying is a very, <laughs> is a very good idea when it comes to the fight against corruption. Yeah. So um, as sports people, who do you think we should hold accountable when it comes to ensuring that there is integrity, there is equal measure in this space? Is it the federation? Is it the ministry? Um, is it the sports teams? Is it the players? Uh, I'll ask Goodson. Um, thank you, host. Now, every stakeholder who is part of sports mm. has a role to play mm. because this is a huge battle. It's big to fight corruption. Uh, when we're talking about corruption, national corruption maybe mm. in the country, you see it is not, it's not the president himself cannot fight this. Mm. He needs to use the, the IGG, he needs <laughs> to use the, the different branches and departments to ensure that this vice is scrapped off. Mm. Now, every party has to play their role well. They need to do their job well. Mm. We, when we're talking about football, now, football is more, more than just on the, the on field the court. Yes. or yeah. on court. Uh, football, in fact, football or sports has more percentage outside the stakeholders. How do they do the management of the teams? How do they do the administration? How do they manage hand of mm. finances? So, if we're talking about money may be coming into the team. How is it handled by the administrator? Are so the players getting the best of the best? So everybody has a collective everybody responsibility. Everybody has a collective responsibility. Mm. The federation itself, mm. or the, for volleyball, maybe for football, has a part to play in regulating. Recently, the former president yeah, successfully moved a, a private member's bill. They discussed it and the president assented to it. The National Sports Act 2023. And it has a provision, at least it speaks 
against doping. Mm. Now, mm. whoever is found involved in doping, it is you against the state now, mm. because the president has assented to it. Mm. So for that, they, they find you, there is evidence that you, 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 you're performing you know, with uh, substances that are not allowed, illegal, you're it's you against the state. That's you're going to be, they're going to take you yeah. down, talk about you, yeah. uh, criminalize you, and then put you behind bars. Yeah. So, if there is a law, yeah. it is good. We can follow the law. And then, the, the, the Federation definitely should put sanctions. Some have been seeing sanctions against referees. For example, there's that referee called... Uh, Juma Osire, mm. uh, the game between Chitara and Vipers. Yes. Vipers was hosting against Chitara. It was a clear goal. It was a clear goal, but he ruled it out for offside. Now, they, they suspended him for six months. Mm. Not because of only that game, but because he has some records of uh, unfair officiation yeah. that people are becoming suspicious that Definitely. why is it mm. so rampant on only this person? Yeah. Uh, why, why, is it, why does it have to be only you making such mm. mistakes? Mm. So, now, sanctioning and banning people mm. who are involved in corruption, mm. of course, fining them, he was meant to pay some fine. Mm. If that can be, the Federation can do its part. Yes. The, you, you, the viewer, or the fan mm. can report after recognizing. I think this, this battle can, okay. can be solved mm. together. Uh, um, we're running out of time, but I'll have to come to Shamira. What advice would you give the, the, the athletes in particular? Now, we have finished talking about the administration. Mm -hmm. What about the athletes? What advice would you give them um, in becoming ambassadors in the fight against corruption? I think athletes need to actually stand up. You, need, you needn't fear. You have to rise up because this is your sport that you're playing. So if you don't come up to save your sport, then who is going to save it for you? And being a journalist or social media person, I would say use your platforms. Just point it out. Mm. Yeah, save yourself. Because if you do not save your team, you're going to miss out. You're going to lose. You, you will not play the game. Definitely. The game will be destroyed. Mm. And that would be bad for you. Mm. And then another thing, uh, Godson was talking about <laughs> referees. I'm sorry to bring this back up. <laughs> Let's speak about the federation. Bit, no. yeah. I think s members of the federation sometimes have a, a relationship with, it's not a, the other relationship, it's a professional relationship mm -hmm. with players and teams. Mm -hmm. And so there are teams that, have the, that are big. You hear big teams. They have money. They have, those teams play a very, very big part in corruption in games. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes even the federations may be may be scared to call these teams out mm. because the teams bring in money mm. what yes. for them yes and being in a team that is big even the players themselves will be like my team is big, big. why should i fight my mm. team is already there so there is that thing some players in those other smaller teams may fear to come up say maybe <coughs> vipers on duparaka will say i can't go against vipers mm. a player from there can can't say I saw that maybe the referee did this, but Definitely. I can't go against vipers. Yeah. So you needn't be scared. You have to mm. come up. It doesn't matter mm. who you're fighting against. We'll definitely have to continue this conversation another day. Thank you so much for tuning in on your space with your host, Hannah Arinete. See you again next Sunday. Bye-bye. <laughs>